All right. Lisa, welcome. Hello again. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Grant Kastner. By now, you and I are probably best friends from wherever you were watching. I recognize a lot of your names. Uh, this is Asynchronous Practice and Routines on Extempore. Presented by me, your community manager of Extempore, Grant Kastner. I also teach Chinese uh, in chi high school level Chinese here in Minnesota. Um, today is July 14th, 2021. And this is, again, part of our Extempore 2021 Summer PD Series, a PD Extravaganza, hashtag Extempore PD. Uh, let's get into it. So asynchronous practice and routines on Extempore. So a session breakdown, routines 101. What are we, what are we doing in this, in this session? We're gonna define routines, first of all. We're gonna talk about why we should use routines, integrating routines into your class, some examples of routines. I use I use extempore for routines quite a bit in my class. One of the reasons that it inspired this presentation, um, and then hosting these on extempore, giving scoring and feedback on them. Because if you think about it, if you take a step back and you think about it, well, if we're giving routine assignments, right? If it's something that students are doing every day, every other day, well, then that's a lot of things submitted, and that's a lot of student responses that we're going to get, which is great, right? Our students are speaking, they're getting their practice, they're speaking the language every single day. Woohoo! That's great. But it's a lot to grade and it's a lot to look at and it's a lot of feedback to give. And that can be pretty overwhelming. So we'll look at that, we'll talk about that. I'll give you some tips and some considerations for using for, for using extemporary for routine practice. Uh, and then finally, I'll give you guys some nice, free, beautiful routine practice templates that you can use. And after that, we will segue into a nice little Q&A. Are we ready? Are we ready for another fantastic stellar extemporary PD extravaganza presentation webinar? I think so. So, what is routine practice? Why, why should we use it? Now, one thing I want to preface this by saying is that I did a lot of research. I looked around, I tried to find, you know, using routine practice, using, you know, uh, rep repetition in language learning. And there, there, is, there is research there, but there was nothing really concrete that what I was looking for, I could find some solid quotes and put them in and say, okay, there is, you know, legitimate evidence on why you should do this. So a lot of this, I'll be honest, is from my personal experience, but I have found that they benefit me. And I have found that Extempore is a very useful tool to facilitate routine practice. And so I wanted to give a presentation on it. So I don't have a ton of academic background. This, a lot of this is from my personal experience. So let's get into it. These are not, one thing I want to preface this by saying, these are not classroom routines, like saying the date or asking the weather or greeting students or you know going to get your homework from someone. Not those routines. This is routine practice, right? My sort of definition that I came up with was routine activities are activities that expose students to language at a greater frequency and provide channels for students to use the language in a low pressure environment. So not summative assessments that you're doing, you know, you're giving them 10 seconds to compare, 10 seconds to respond. Let's go. You can do it every single day. They're challenging. No, it's, it's very, very low pressure, right? That's why, that's how they become routines. Uh, and they don't need to be every day. But for me, I like to do them at least twice a week because right? then it becomes parts, it becomes routine. Would you believe it? Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of background. I have some more, some characteristics. What, what, what sort of traits do these routine activities have? First of all, as I mentioned earlier, they are low pressure tasks. Remember, routines are for increased exposure. It's for getting your kids to see the language more, to produce the language more, to hear it, to read it, to speak it, to write it, to just do something with the language. These activities should not be summative assessment challenge tasks. The goal is for students to grow comfortable and gradually gain confidence. Keep them simple. The more the student interacts with the language and engages with the language, the more confident that they will be using it. Two, it takes them less than five minutes to complete. It's, again, part of a routine. It is simple, it is brief. Routine activities are things that students can easily fit into their morning slash pre-class schedule. If it takes too long, they won't do that. They will be much more receptive towards activities if they know they can be done quickly. Now, you may be thinking, well, it doesn't matter what I give my students. Some of them, they're just not going to do it regardless. I think every teacher has that problem. But my sort of philosophy towards using routine activities is that if I, if I have a class of 25 students and I can give them something that they can do on extemporary every, you know, twice a week and it takes them less than five minutes and 20 out of those 25 students will do it, to me, it's worth it at the end of the day, right? That's so much extra practice that I can give them. They reinforce no, no, sorry, known language, structures, phrases, et cetera. 
a lot of this idea of using routines is about repetition, right? Consider the role that repetition plays in learning a new language. You need constant, consistent exposure to vocabulary, phrases, idioms, before students can really internalize them and develop automaticity. Routine activities are exercises in repetition, right? You're not introducing saying, okay, this is all the vocabulary we're gonna learn in our lesson for today. And I want you to do it in less than five minutes before. That's not what I'm talking about here, right? Things that they've seen before, things that they're doing, things that they're familiar with, and you're, you're reinforcing, you're hammering it home. Haha, <laughs> yes, yes, that's why I have the emoji here, right? Hammering it home, getting them to know it. Finally, previewing new language. Wait a second, Grant, didn't you just say that we're not supposed to introduce that? Well, yes, but but the reason why I put this is that, yeah, you could put new language in there, right? So say, say I give an oral reading, I have a text for my students to read, and then I put one new word in, right? I might say, okay, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn the word tian qi today in Chinese, for example. I might put that word into their to their oral reading with every other word that they already know. And then when we come to class, I might say, okay, if you guys did the did our routine practice this morning, you might be familiar with seeing this word. What do you think it meant? Right. So it's getting them exposed to it before they might see it in the classroom. Um, yes, you can include new language all the way from here, but tread carefully with routine activities, limit new language to no more than two units, like two new words or an idiom or a phrase. Um, and then the important thing is, is that I have my students do these the day of, it's like in the morning, right? In the morning before school, or even if it takes them two or three minutes in between class. Um, so it previews it, right? It's something that they can see that will come up in class later and they've already seen it. So some characteristics, simple, low pressure tasks. They take less than five minutes. They reinforce known language structures, and they might, they just might preview new language. So I've been talking a lot, both today and in this presentation, and I'd like to just get a little bit of your feedback. Are there any other traits that you can think of that might be part of routines? What, what other traits maybe would I have missed here? And I'm sort of, I'm sort of making this up on the go, given what I've done. Let me know in the chat if you guys have any ideas. I've been talking a lot today. I need to take a breather. Let me know what they know. Any other traits you might think? Yay, a response. Whoa, two responses. Woohoo. Kay says pronunciation focus. Yeah, absolutely. Students are comfortable because they know what to do. Students are familiar with the kind of task after doing it several times. Yeah, exactly. Callie, and that that's, yeah, you and, and GM both mentioned they know what to do, right? And the some of the examples that I'm gonna show you, like dictations and oral readings, it becomes second nature for them. This is similar to what I was talking about yesterday. I gave the webinar on um, introducing your students to extempore, and it's about the repetition. When you do things over and over, you get comfortable with them. If you only do it once a month, you might be like, oh, what did we do last time? I can't remember this. If you're doing it twice a week, it's second nature. It's going to come very easily. Okay, so quick reminders. They're simple. They are low, low pressure, right? Very, very low stakes. They reinforce the known language. They take less than five minutes, and they preview new language. Yes, these are all possible. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second, Grant. You're telling me all of these things. Isn't, isn't this just, just extra homework that we're giving our students? Improve fluency, thank you, Kat. Yeah, for adding that on. Isn't this just extra homework? I mean, and I, I thought of this. I, I, I thought that this was some type of pushback that I would get from talking about using extempore for routine activities and just giving your students extra practice. And you're like, well, that's, that's just homework. That's just extra homework. If you want to think of it like that and say, well, this is just extra homework, sure, go ahead, right? be my guest, I won't, I won't be hurt. But at the end of the day, for me, it's really, it's really not. It's not supposed to be homework. It's done before class on the same day, which I don't know, maybe you're asking a lot of students for doing that, but if it takes less than five minutes and if it can become part of their routine, it can be very easy to do. It is to prepare for the upcoming class, not necessarily to review the previous one. Now, homework can serve both purposes, but really this is for preparing students for the coming class. It takes less than five minutes. It's not all graded, as I will mention. And again, if it's been done frequently enough, I have said this countless times already, it becomes part of their routine and even maybe a conditioned response. That, so that before they get to your door of your classroom, they say, oh, wait a second. Have I done the extemporary today? Have I done the extemporary today? Today's Monday. 
we have extemporaries, I'm going to, have I done it yet? And then it becomes second nature. And they're not worrying, oh, you know, do I have homework in this class, do I have homework? No, do, the, do our daily practice. That is the assignment. And then another pushback question would be, couldn't I just do this as a warm up? Again, if you really want to, so be it, go ahead, right? Yeah, you could, but the idea is to get students to do their on their own agency, right? Taking responsibility. And two, you can save five to 10 minutes of class time and just get your students more involved with using the language. And I promise you, students who do this will reap the benefits. And, and this is probably the last piece of pushback that I'll mention before I really get into the examples is that, yeah, you like I said, you might have a class of 25 students and, and five or six of them guaranteed won't do it. Oh, well, right, that's, that's really my perspective. But if I can get 80% of my kids to, to get three or five minutes extra practice every single day before class, they're, then they have, they've already sp spoken a language, they've already seen it, they've already been exposed to it. That is so much more extra preparation for, before class that just, it really makes a difference at the end of the day. And this is something that, I mean, I would even be interested in doing like a study on this and seeing you know, what are the long-term benefits of even doing five minutes of practice before class. Okay, some examples. I'll show you, I'll write them out here, tell you why I do them, and we'll see exactly how that looks on the extemporary platform. Oral readings, yay, yay, oral readings. I love oral readings. If you know me, like oral readings is practically my middle name at this point. Um, all it is, <laughs> is reading a narrative or dialogue out loud. That's all. If you know me, I have preached this nonstop. I've done a specific webinar entirely on it. I've written blogs about it. I love oral reading. It is great for speaking with emotion, practicing your pronunciation, and even learning a different script from the students L1, right? So I teach Chinese, my students have to learn characters. If there is a character that they don't know, they don't know how to pronounce it. They have to learn how to pronounce every single character that they see, right? Great practice for that is simply giving them a text of characters and saying, hey, read this out loud. Tell me you know how to read it. If they can't read it, then they don't know the characters. That's one reason why I love oral readings. It's great for even, even languages with a familiar script, if you're using a Latin script, uh, Latin letters with say Spanish, French, German, um, Norwegian, Danish, I don't know, whatever language you're teaching. It's still great for getting your students. It's so low pressure. They can speak with emotion. They can practice their pronunciation. They can pronounce questions like questions. They can be sad, really sad if they need to. You know, they can use proper emotion, right? Depending on the circumstance. And that alone can show comprehension. More examples, dictations. Yes, I said it, dictations. I love dictations. You listen to a narrative or dialogue and all you do is you type out what you hear. It is perfect for learning to, it's great typing practice. I mean, you know, when we learn new languages, we have to learn, we have to read, we have to write, we do a lot, but also to type. And it can be very difficult learning how to type in a new language, particularly if you have accents. And if, for me, if I have to teach pinyin, which is how you type out Chinese characters, it can be hard, great typing practice. Um, distinguishing familiar sounding words and, and or homophones. I've mentioned this in other um, webinars before. Like in English, you have read and read, spelled the exact same way. Content and content, dessert, desert, sound similar, spelled similarly, not exactly the same. Other languages have other examples too. Um, and then of course, exposure to different accents and regional pronunciation, depending on where you are. Almost every language has different, has areas where it is pronounced differently. So for example, in Chinese, Sometimes they will say zhong shan, sometimes they will say zong san, and it's the exact same word. Um, you just have to know where they're coming from. Jian loves using dictations for one, so I love this idea. I love it too. It is absolutely fantastic. And it's great. It is really, really good practice. And you might think it's outdated. And it's like, but didn't they do that in like the 1850s when they were learning languages? Well, yeah, they might have, but it's still a really good skill. It's all four skills you have to reading. Yeah, like the R accent in Beijing, 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 right? Or um, I'm trying to think, you know, it, it dian, or sorry, zainali is how you say where in Chinese. We can also say zainar, right? And that depends on where you are. So all, all sorts of English has English. Step back. All languages have different, you know, regional variations, word, word pronunciations, word differentiations, soda, pop, Coke, that type of stuff. Dictations are good for that. More examples, image and media response. These are very straightforward. The students see an authentic text or an image and they respond to it, right? You give them something to look at and you have them do something with it. Great for real world tasks and establishing communicative context. 
Any more? Others? What can you think of? Let me know in the chat. These are ones that I primarily use myself. Listening and shadowing variation for practicing of pronunciation. Lisa, can you go into detail on what shadowing is? SEL check-in, yes. Why not do an SEL check-in? Absolutely, yeah, just something. Could even, you could even give a multiple choice, right? Five multiple choice questions as an SEL check-in. How are you doing today? Describe pictures and have students draw what they hear. Ooh. You could, you could give a description of a picture or a place or a thing and then have students choose or tell, tell you what they think it is and say why. Others, 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 any more? Okay, excellent examples. Thank you, thank you. Oral readings, dictations, image and media response, SEL check-ins. Let's do this on extempore, shall we? What do these look like on the extempore platform? I'm gonna drag you over here, drag this over here. So I have, here is a class. This is the student side of extempore. This is what it looks like, the student portal. I am in an extempore for routines practice. Now we can see what some of these types of assessments look like. I have templates and I have practice responses. So I'm gonna jump in here to the oral reading practice and we'll see what this looks like. So. I have read the text out loud using emotion and proper cadence. Practice your pronunciation. And so I don't want to read, read the text out loud using emotion and proper cadence. Practice your pronunciation. That's boring, right? We want our students to emote, to show that they can use their emotions outside of, a lang of their L1 language. I click in. Oh my gosh, it's all Chinese to me. How, however, am I, however am I going to read this? I click record. 今天我想去公園跑步,可是我聽說會下雨怎麼辦?小明今天有空,不能去他家玩。同時,白邊跟我說他晚上有空,但現在才四點了,太早了。I have my recording. Oh look, that took 15 seconds. Submit attempts. Normally, for oral reading practices, I have my students do two, so you'll see there You'll see on the completed or reading practice, I call this set one. I call it set one, and then I'll have a set two. So I'd have my students do one and two. My response was 15 seconds. It took me two seconds. It took me five seconds to open the, open the app, 15 seconds to respond, hit submit, go in, do another one for 15 or 20 seconds, and I'm done. That's it. That is the, is the daily practice. Literally takes two minutes for my students to do. You do that over time, it pays dividends. Let's look at a few more. Dictation practice. You guys remember what a dictation is? Oh, type what you hear. That's it, that's all you have to do. I have a nine second audio, am I ready to type? I think so. Students will type their response here. They can play this multiple times. They can um, you know, drag and drag it however they need to go. If you want, you could add timers here. I don't really see the need, again, particularly with routine practice, they're not really needed. So let's do it, let's play, my, let's play the dictation. Oh, I have my text. I hit submit. Done. That's it. How long did that take me? Obviously, I'm a, an advanced speaker of Chinese and I'm also a teacher, so my students might take a little longer, but still, um, very quick, very low pressure, very straightforward. And the other thing is that, that I'll, I'll have a little aside right here before I get into some other examples. I've had my students tell me before, like, oh, yeah, Mr. Castor, I do it on the bus on the way to school, right? They just, you know, listen. They read the, they read the text, read out loud, speak into their phones, done, right? Or they text, they, they type in the, uh, the dictation onto their phones. It's, I keep emphasizing, that's what I mean by low pressure, quick, right? Picture response, practice. Let's do a picture response. Oh my gosh, there's no directions. What do I do? One, your friend sends a message to you. Respond appropriately. <gasps> what are you going to do Wednesday? I look at the weather. I think, okay, well, I'm probably going to go to work. I mean, I do that every other day. Okay, I'll tell him. So I have my timer. 
。周三我要先上班，然后下午因为天气看起来比较好，所以我要去公园跑步。So I said something along the lines of, you know, I, I mentioned the weather looks pretty good on Wednesday, so I'm gonna go running at the park. I submit my attempt. I'm done. Just like that. I'm done. Again, quick, easy, low pressure, low stress, low maintenance. Not a lot of demanding action for the students to take, <laughs> and you are not setting a lot of demands as the teacher. So, I have in here, and I will share this、uh, class with you guys. Dictation template, where I sort of give a how do I put this? I explain how to create these types of assessments on extemporary. This is a dictation. Type what you hear. That's all you have to do. And then here, I put a little, little more directions. Make sure you add an audio file. That is part of a dictation. Remind them again of what they have to do. Type what you hear. You will hear each sentence x times. Whatever you want to do. And then I even give you a little note. In your audio file, make sure you speak clearly and slowly. Yes, speak clearly and slowly. Okay. So just like that, I have a dictation template, picture response template, or reading template telling you what you need to do. So we have a question. I will answer it, Callie. Let's see. Answer live. Uh, Kelly says, "Do you give each one feedback, which could be very time-consuming, or just pick one or two a week to give each individual feedback?" That is an excellent segue into the feedback section of this presentation. I will answer that right now. So, before I get into that, I want to pause for just a brief second. Are there any questions I can answer about what students do, what the student view looks like,、um, other types of examples, and then we will get into grading and scoring、um, these routine practices. Fire away! I will leave Callie up there till we get there. Any other questions I can answer? Here we are. Oh, Beth, you're welcome. We're not done yet. We're not yet. We're not done yet. I'm I'm glad you're enjoying it, but we are not done just yet. You're not done done just yet. Don't go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so here are, like I said, here are some of our examples. You will see that they go to the completed section. Again, short, quick, takes two seconds to do.、Um, let's go. Let's get into grading. How do we score these? All right. So, so here I am back on my. Find the right class. My goodness. Oh my gosh, so many. For routines, here I am back on my teacher side on the grading page. Now I will answer Callie's response, or Callie's question right now, which was, "Do you give each one feedback, which can be very time-consuming, or do you just pick one or two per week to give each individual feedback?" Here is how I will answer that. I actually want to show you first before I show you what it looks like here. I want to show you my actual class, or、mm, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, for for I don't want to reveal a student name, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I will. I will explain. I did this. Let me show you. Actually, this this is one of my students from last year. This is her page. You can see fifty five completed. You can see daily reading, daily reading, daily reading, daily reading, daily reading, daily reading, daily re dictation, dictation, daily reading, daily reading, daily. We did a lot of daily readings, right? So you can see now. You will also see. Wow, Mr. Kastner, almost all of those are graded. Yes. I also only had one class, and I only had seven students in that class. So I was fortunate that I was able to give feedback for all of those things. So I might say, "Daily reading here. Here's the set. There's my feedback. There's her submission. There's what she, that's what she read. I had them read it twice. That takes a little bit longer, but I think it's worth the practice."、Um, now, to answer your question, right? What do you do? So this year, this coming year, I'm going to have four different classes, and I'm probably going to have close to you know seventy, eighty students. It's going to be a little different than having seven students.、Um, so, what do you do then, right? How do you how do you give them feedback, but still get them to do it all the time? Because when some of them might also say, "Okay, well,、oh, well if Mr. Kastner is not going to agree, I'm not going to do it," right? <laughs> I mean, you're going you're going to get students that do that, right? My idea is this, right? I might say, "Okay, we have," I might give you three oral readings a week. If I have one class that has thirty students. And they do three oral readings a week. That's ninety responses I have to listen to per week. If it's at least a minute per feedback, that's an hour and a half I'm spending on grading. Just this, right? Just the oral reading practices. 
what I would tell my students is, okay, maybe we'll do three a week. And then every two weeks, pick one of them for me to grade, pick one, right? Send me an email and say, okay, Mr. Kastner, I think the one from this past Wednesday was my best one. I want you to score that one, right? And then I think, honestly, I would grade the rest for completion. And, and for me, for me as a teacher, I would go by honesty policy. I would just take the honesty policy, right? If I have students and it says they've submitted a submitted assignment, I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna say, you know what? I don't have time to, to go through and see if they're, how long they are, if they said it, I'm not gonna do that, right? If the students are doing them and they're doing them genuinely and doing them the way we have told them to do them, they will reap the benefits. If they're not, and they're just recording a one second audio file, you know, you can, you can handle that however you want. I, I, you know, pick your battles. I'm not going to choose to fight over that. And that's, that's their integrity that they're showing by doing that. Right. I mean, if I come across a response like that, I might say, Hey, you know, uh, I noticed you submitted a one second audio response for each one of these. Um, why, but I'm not going to go through and spend that, that much time. It, yeah, exactly. It, Callie's right. It, it'll, they're, their proficiency will be reflected in summative scores, which you can give oral readings as a summative assessment. But at the same time, if you have 90 responses to grade in one week, on top of everything else that you have to do, or no, let me, let me just step back a second. 90 responses for one class, right? 30 students per class, three oral readings a week. Say you have three classes, that's 270 responses. That's, that's just not doable, it's impossible. So I will tell my students, pick one, just pick one. And that's the one I will give you feedback on. You, know, you might say, okay, I don't, I think I did the, the, I think I did my poorest on this one. Or you know what, Mr. Castro, this one was solid. I want you to listen to this one. Leave that up to them, right? That's student choice. The students taking agency for their work. That's that would really be my suggestion for grading. So, what does grading look like? I'd love to show you. So I have responses. I have a response here. I can see the student's response. I can play it. 今天我想去公园跑步，可是我听说会下雨，怎么办？小明今天有空，不能去他家玩。同时，白冰跟我说他晚上有空，但现在才四点了，太早了。Wow, that that was quite the reading. What I like to do for my my oral reading responses is give them video feedback, and then I will record myself. I will play their response. 今天我想去公园跑步， and I'll say stop right there. You're speaking way too fast. You need to slow down, right? You can you can give them feedback as you go. You can pause it. You can give them feedback like that, and that's how I like to give feedback, at least on the oral readings. You might say, oh, you know, this word is pronounced, you know, 天气 not 天气 right? Because Chinese is a tonal language. Um, and then I would do that, and I would submit it to them. That is on that's oral readings. That's a whole nother ballgame. We are talking about routine routines, after all. Um, so I'm going to jump back here, and I still see that I have two other things to grade. And I think I don't want to go too much into, into detail about um, scoring these. I think I would just keep it consistent, right? Maybe you, maybe you mix up the routines. Right? I personally like doing oral readings, and those are usually the only types of routines that I assign. But if you do dictations, you might do it the same way, right? You have you know 90 responses to score. Tell me one that you think you did the best at, right? If you have a, a picture response, you have 90 responses to score. Tell your students, hey, pick one from the last two weeks um, to grade. Right, so this is the, yeah, this is the image prompt. I can see my students' response. And again, I can give audio or video feedback or text feedback, and then the student will see that. One other thing I will add just on top of this is that the cool thing about giving feedback is that, and my students, I think they really liked it um, this year. I even had one of them say, you know, Mr. Kastner, I die a little inside when I have to hear myself do the readings, but, your feedback, your feedback is really helpful. I really like hearing that. And I always um, like to share that with the audience. But what's cool is that as soon as I hit submit feedback here, as long as it's, it is uh, activated in your preferences, your students will get an email telling them, hey, Mr. Gassner left you feedback for X question in X assessment. Go check it out on Extempore. Uh, and it'll push them to, to go right there. And then they can see the feedback that you left for them. Pause. Questions, comments, concerns before we wrap up on using extemporary for asynchronous and routine questions. Another question from Mercedes. These are these activities, let me answer live. These activities are good for peer feedback. Is there a way to share the student work anonymously to receive peer feedback? Well, it would only be so anonymous as the students not 
knowing the vo the voice their their peers' voices. Just take that into consideration. Um, you could easily, if I go here, you'll notice that I can download this response and I have community manager's response. I could then rename that file um, and upload it to Google Drive. I could put it on my LMS. I could do you know anything I wanted with it because once it's a file, I can manipulate it however I want. You could put it, I mean, you could even do what would be cool. It would take a little bit of work having to download each file, but what would be, I think a neat idea is if you hosted these like in an, on your LMS or in a Google Drive and you made them all anonymous, you could say, you know, you could put a story as an oral reading and then say, hey, who did the best reading of this story and why, right? And then you can have all of your students listen to, to the responses that you've, you've collected. Um, and that would not only, that would engage your students, that would have others, you know, listening, that would have one set of class, classmates listening to their other peers' responses. Of course, I would also advise, um, you know, some students I think might be a little more conscientious about their pronunciation and maybe say, hey, you know, if you're okay with this, I'm going to do it. If not, please let me know. Because right? some students might, they just might be a little embarrassed because that's, that's why we do these, these routine practices is to get them more comfortable speaking the language. And if they're not there yet, and then they're, they're audio files out there for everyone to hear. And then, you know, you have kids saying, oh, ha ha, did you hear how Grant pronounced all those words? Oh, he's such a bad speaker. Now, hopefully you don't have students like that, but there's always the possibility of that happening. Um, just something to keep in mind. Other questions, comments, concerns, lots of, lots of good chatter today. Okay, let's wrap up, shall we? I'm gonna pull back my little presentation that I made. No, it is not extra homework, it is routine practice. Scoring and feedback on routine practice. Here, here is my, my feedback, my ideas that I pretty much already talked about. Don't grade all of them, especially if you give three a week, you'll be swamped. But if I don't grade them, my students won't do them, what do I do? Oh well, I don't know. You do what you can. Those who do do them will get the benefit. A couple other things, keep your activities consistent throughout a set period of time. For example, you might give five oral readings in a given week, that's a lot. But then students only pick two of their five submissions for you to grade or provide feedback on. Even that would still be a lot. But if you have smaller classes or say you're only doing async, um, routine activities with your AP class, right? Not your other classes aren't ready for it yet. Maybe that would be a little more feasible. And then like I mentioned at the end, you can always grade for completion um, practice. For, for a completion grade. Some final tips, use them as warmups, right? Students have already seen them and, that, and with this, they are already much more prepared. What do I mean by that? So when I say use them as warmups, I might, for example, give an exit slip where I have a whole text, right? And my students have to fill in the blanks. And then on extempore, I would give that exact same text. Say I give the, the exit slip on Thursday, right? Friday morning, I put it on extempore for them to read again with the answers already filled in. Them come on Friday, Friday morning in class, they're already seeing it, right? That saves a lot of time. This is repeat, ignore that. Pro tip number two, keep them consistent, right? You can always grade for completion, things to consider. So remember, they are simple. They are less than five minutes. They reinforce vocabulary and phrases and they preview new language sometimes, but not a lot. Keep these things in mind and thank you. That really, I think, would be as a solid, is a, a good conclusion for this presentation. Please do not forget to leave feedback for the session on the Sketch app. Send us a tweet, tweet, Tweety Bird on hashtag Extemporary PD and maybe win some prizes. Check out our previous sessions on YouTube. This will be there by sometime this afternoon. Um, and come see us tomorrow for more sessions featuring Extemporary for exams and security and using Extemporary for all three modes of communication with our lovely friends from Dactyl. Questions, comments, concerns. Thank you again. Uh, Mercedes says, I would like to do it for writing, like describing pictures or writing a story. Yeah, uh, I'll answer Mercedes's question now. Um, so remember, just keep in mind, story writing can take a bit of time. Um, and these are things that, you know, we want, we want our students to be able to do easily and with low pressure. So maybe describing pictures. I think describing a picture would be, would be a solid one. Right? You just put a picture up, you can always just say, Write anything, write anything about this picture. You could do this, see, think, wonder. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? Do that in the target language. Um, so yeah, that's totally viable. Four comments, wow. 
Slides will be on sketch. Yes, I will put them there, Callie, very, very soon. Jan, happy to have you. Mercedes, happy to have you. Kay says, what about asynchronous groups for routine practice? Oh, you're asking all of the right questions. Yeah, so Accenture does have asynchronous groups. And one of the things that I thought of, I can show you guys, I don't wanna, I'll just, I'll talk about it here. You can do asynchronous groups on Extempore. And what that means is you can have various students in the same group, but they're not speaking at the exact same time. It's pretty much like a you know WeChat or WhatsApp when you can you record the message on your phone and, go, and it sends out, and then everybody can listen to it, right? That's what the extempore that's how the extempore routine groups work. And you could definitely do that. You could have students talk to one another each day or every other day, however often you want to do it. And respond to one another. Yeah, so I think that's that's absolutely a viable option for routine practice. Other questions, comments, final thoughts, ideas. Be happy to hear. How large can the group? Uh, asynchronous groups can have up to fifteen students at a time. So I don't think we recommend that, but you can do up to 15 students. If there are no other questions, I will stop sharing. I will stop the recording. Any questions? Yes, no. Raise your hand. Stop recording.